Oke. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The honorable director of Profidi. Me, Prahita Ishnaini, and my partner, Sinta Puspita, today we will present unit 24 and 25. For unit 24, about direct and indirect elocutions presented by Mbak Sinta, and unit 25 by me. To shorten the time, Mbak Sinta, please start the presentation. Thank you, Prahita. Okay, we will start the presentation and during my explanation, maybe you can take your breakfast or your snack and drink to enjoy our presentation. Okay, wait. You can look my presentation, my slide. Yes, Mbak Sinta. Okay, today I would like to present Unit 24. With the, with the topic direct and indirect elocution. This is the definition of elocution, direct elocution, and indirect elocution. The first is elocution. Elocution are act defined by social convention. They reflect the intention of the speaker. And according to Habermas in 1998, elocution is the act of doing something based on what is said. And then direct elocution. The elocution of the utterance that it is most directly indicated by a literal reading of the grammatical form and vocabulary of the sentence uttered. And then the last indirect elocution. Elo indirect elocution is an elocutionary act in which the speaker express another elocutionary force other than the literally expressed in the utterance. Elocution example. This is uh, the illustration following Austin in 1962. In every speech act, we can distinguish three things. They are locution, elocution, the elocution and perlocution. For the example, oh my, I think I'm lost. What is said? What she said, the utterance can be called the locution. So the locution speech is a obedient of the truth condition and require require a sense or test and references to be understood. And then this is the illustration of elocution. I think I'm lost. There is a bus station around here, isn't it? What the speaker intends to the communicate to the addresses, its name, the elocution. So the elocution is what uh, is achieved by communicating the intention to achieve something. Through speech, people can create something new, can make people do something and change the situation and other. So the elocution is to require the intention to the hearer. And this is the perlocution. I'm lost. Can you tell me where the bus station is, please? Oh, yeah, just go straight and you will find the bus station. 
This is the perlocution. The message that the addresses the message that the addresses gets. She interpretation of what the speaker says. It's named the perlocution. So perlocution is an action or state of mind brought by or as a sequence of the something of the say something speaker need feedback and hearer. So uh, the conclusion of this illustration it's like locution is a code, elocution is to require the intention of hearer and the perlocution is feedback. This is direct and indirect elocution. Okay, this is the example, the question. Can you bring the sweet case? In indirect elocution, it means that questioning questioning the hearer ability to bring the sweet the sweet case. So in this question or in this statement, in 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 indirect elocution, the purpose of the speaker is not only ask can you bring the squid the sweet case, but uh, the hearer also uh, be polite to the hearer to ask the hearer ability to bring the sweet case. And then, uh, according, do, according to indirect elocution, uh, that question as a request that the hearer bring the sweet case. So in indirect, the aim of the speaker is not just to ask a help, but here uh, the speaker express other expression, such as, instruct the hearer or comment the hearer this is a differences of direct and indirect the difference between direct and indirect elocution it's seen through through the fact that a pedantic or deliberate deliberately unhelpful reply can be given to an utterance which has both kinds of elocutions. For example, uh, in reply to I must ask you to leave, one might say, thwarting the intention of the first speaker must you. So, uh, I must ask you to leave. In direct elocution, which means the speaker Assert, asserting the asserting that a uh, speaker is obliged to ask the hearer to leave but in indirect elocution must you which means the speaker asking the hearer to leave so there is there is a differences uh, between the direct and indirect elocution this is the rule, the rule of direct and indirect elocution. The direct elocution is an act to which the hearer attention is drawn by mentioning of one of the one of its felicity condition. Wah, you menantu idaman ya. Pagi-pagi sudah ngepel. You bisa cooking juga. Yes, cooking me instant is my passion. So, it means that the speaker or the ping one asking the hearer about the con about the condition of the hearer, and then the direct elocution of an utterance is deliberately infelicitous. What would you like to drink? I will bring you some coffee. We'll have a fine. So, in this illustration, it's very clear that the waiter or the speaker immediately asking or offering the something uh, or the menu to the hearer. 
All right. <clears throat> uh, I will introduce two major type or classes of illocutionary act, namely direction, directive, and commissive. Directive. Any illocutionary act which involves the speaker trying to get the hearer to behave in some required way. Such example, excuse me, may I borrow your pen, please? So the speaker trying to get the hearer to behave in some required way or required condition. And the commissive, any illocutionary act which involves the speaker committing himself to behave in some required way. Such example. Um, let me repair the camera. Do you want to do it? Yes, I am. So the speaker involves involves himself to the to behave the same situation or to the same communication in required way. This is the further explanation about the directive utterance. Directive utterance are those in which the speaker tries to get the to get the addressee to perform some act or refrain from performing an act. Thus a directive utterance has a pronoun has the pronoun you as a you as an actor, whether that word is actually present in the utterance or not. There are three kinds of directive utterance can be recognized. There are comments, requests, and suggestions. This is this there are some examples of comments such as I order you to appear in court next Monday at 10 a.m. You must appear in court next Monday at 10 a.m. I'm telling you not to waste your time on that. Don't waste your time on that. So the comment can be produced with various degrees of explicit explicitness. Sentence 1a and 2a are more explicit than 1b and 2b. But the b but the b utterance are less formal therefore more usual. This is the request. A request is an expression of what the speaker wants the addressee to do or refrain, refrain from doing a request doesn't assume that the speaker control over the person addressee. This is the illustration of the request. Passengers are required to keep set bell, seat belt fast, when the when the sign is lit. Smoking is not permitted in the lavatories. And to be the boss demand that these letters should go out today. This is the uh, example of request. And then the next, this is the suggestion, are the utterance we make to other persons to give our opinions as to what they should or should not to do. The first is I advise, advise you not to be late. I suggest you should pay more attention to what you're doing. So advice, suggest is the sign of the suggestion. This is the commissive utterance. Speech acts that commit a speaker to a course of action are called commissive utterances. This include promises, pledges, threats, and vows. Commissive verbs are illustrated by agree, ask, over, refuse, swear, all with 
following infinitives, they are prospective and concerned with the speaker's commitment to the future action. Uh, a commissive predicate is one that can be used to commit oneself or refuse to commit oneself. This is a, a commissive predicate is one that can be used to commit oneself or refuse to commit oneself to some future action. The subject, the subject of the sentence is therefore most like to be I or we. I'm sorry. to be I or we as in 1A and 1B. I promise to be on time, promise to be on time. We volunteer to put up the decoration for the dance. In a commissive utterance, the subject is I or we as indicated above. Felicity condition, the speaker is capable of the act and intends to perform it. The addressee has faith has faith has faith in the speaker's intention. All right. The next. This is uh, my perspective or something. Uh, my idea about the direct and indirect elocution i will give a little color in this discussion based on the material so in my perspective direct and indirect can be interpreted of meeting or not or not meeting or it called spoken or written elocution the first is verbal communication speakers and hearers will immediately understand the situation and the condition because because the language the pronunciation is also clear and uh, the speaker and hearer use the right tone or the stressing for example son it is just our regular bridge game you mean your corona spreading club so the speaker and hearer understand about the, situ the situation and condition because they use the uh, the right language and pronunciation and then the stressing it's clear and then the next is in written communication. It might be confused or ambiguous the meaning. For the example, in the use of punctuation. Example, in the use of uh, exclamation. In writing, it can be interpreted as a common sign, but can also be a warning sign or cue to the notice. And for the example, for other example is uh, in the sentence, don't be late. This can be interpreted as a comment and also as a warning. And then I will go there alone. Maybe when uh, we utter it directly in spoken, we will we will able to uh, directly understand or directly interpret the intents of the utterance, but in written we can catch other intention. The utterance can be included in the statement 
or the question. So, even though uh, indirect, indirect and indirect elocution might be have a different meaning, but the essence or the core of the elocution in spoken or in written is the speaker intends to communicate with hearer. I think that's all my explanation about the direct and indirect elocution. And for the next speaker, will be the next material will be presented by Prahita. Is Nailing Tias? Time is yours. Thank you. Uh, okay, friends. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I will present Unit 25 about proposition and elocutions. In the uh, in my book. There are two meaning. There are sentence meaning uh, is what a sentence says meanings regardless of the context and situation in which it may be used. And utterance meaning is what a speaker means when he makes an utterance in a particular situation. And then this is the statements below are from everyday context. Say whether the statement is about sentences meaning or about utterance meaning there are five example and the first uh, a statement by a tourist guide the inscription above this door translate into english means those who enter here will live forever this is called sentence and then, what did you mean by telling me you think twice about lending money to carry? Uh, it is called utterance. Number three, when George says that his gun is loaded, he means it as a threat. It's called utterance. And then number four, <coughs> I think I understand the literal meaning of what you are saying, but I cannot see why you should be saying it to me. It's called sentence. And Fred is very understanding. He knows what I mean even though I don't use the right words to say it. It calls utterance. And number six, no hip injury is too trivial to ignore actually and surprisingly means the opposite of what you first think. It called sentences. And there are three types of proposition fake value and policy. And the first proposition of fake is a statement in which you focus like largely on belief of the audience in its truth or falsehood and in a proposition of value you make a statement where you are asking your audience to make an evaluative judgment as to whether the statement is morally good or bad right or wrong and the last a proposition of policy advocates a course of action and the attributes of a good proposition, there are two, debatable and profitable. The debatable, a proposition should first be debatable in that arguments may be marshaled for and against the proposition. And the profit, profitable, as we are, 
as well as arguing for an against the case, it should be possible to conclusively prove the truth of your proposition. The gap between sentence meaning and utterance meaning is least noticeable when speakers are being direct, not being ironic or diplomatic or polite. Politeness is one of the main motivations for using an indirect elocution in preference to a direct one. The term proposition refers to the language independent core meaning of sentences, which expresses the factuality of a given state of affairs. A proposition is a few points that you will create even or destroy, it should be worded as a de declarative sentence that unambiguously expresses your position. A proposition can be the main point of your position. It can also be a single supportive element. It can also be an opposing proposition that you will disprove. In the previous unit, we saw how a speaker could carry out an in indirect elocution by or directly asserting or questioning certain of its felicity conditions. Now we will go through an exactly parallel exercise illuminating one aspect of the relationship between propositions and elocutions. The elocution force. The elo Elocutionary force of an utterance is the speaker's intention in production, producing that utterance. An elocutionary age is an intense of a culturally defined speech age type character, characterized by particular elocutionary force. For example, promising, advising, and warning. Elocutionary force is the combi combination of the elocutionary point of an utterance and the particular presuppositions and attitudes that must accompany that point, including the strength of the elocutionary point, preparatory condition, proportional content condition, mode of achievement, scenery conditions, and strength of scenery conditions. Elocutionary force distinguishes the following types of edge. There are asserting, promising, excommunication, communicating, exclaiming in pain, inquiring, and ordering. Express the proportional content of each of the following directives with a declarative sentence. Number one, I would like you to feed my cat while I'm on holiday. You will feed my cat while I'm on holiday. And number two, four set. Uttered by a surgeon during an operation. means you will pass me in the forceps. Number three, relax. It means you will relax. Number four, don't give up, means you will not give up. The professional content of a commissive elocution can be expressed by a declarative sentence, describing the action which the speaker undertakes to perform. In each of of the following cases, give an assertion of the professional content of the commissive elocution concert. E. Father promising to buy his son a rubber dinghy when he can swim. Means, I will buy you a rubber dinghy when you can swim. B. Dinner guys offering to help wash the dinner dishes. Means, I will have washed the dishes. See, soldier volunteering to cover his sections 
retreat means I will cover the sections retreat. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you for watching our presentation. We open four question. We open three or four question, please. Please for friends who will ask or comment. Iya, Mbak Dia. My eye, eye. Of course. Yes, uh, please, Mbak Dia. Uh, could you give me uh, the example of uh, direct and for indirect? me? Uh, who's the team? Who's the topic for uh, direct and indirect? Mbak Sita yeah. ya? Iya, yeah, Mbak yeah. Hi. Uh, could you give me the example direct and indirect allocation? Uh, in the group of or or the classifying of the directive and commissive uh, especially in indonesian setting i hope okay okay uh, you need the example direct and indirect elocution in the type of directive and commissive yes mbak dian yes. Okay, thank you, Mbak Sinta. Thank you, Mbak Dian. Hello, Sinta. May I ask something? Of course, KB. Okay, thanks for your information about direct and indirect uh, elocution. So, this is a simple question based on your um, comprehension and understanding about this topic. That is, you explain about indirect. Uh, it is kind of what is it? Uh, there is a hidden uh, implication, or there are maybe more than one implication inside of the utterances, because the speaker want to achieve um, additional information, maybe or another meaning. Uh, so they will deliver indirect elocution. So what if? Uh, the hearer cannot catch the real meaning when the speaker says Sorry, or Katie. speak. Huh? When the hearer, when the hearer oh, cannot, when the hearer uh, uh, cannot achieve or catch the meaning or the real um, implication of the indirect elocution. So. What will you suggest, or what is your strategy to prevent that? Do you get it? Strategy to prevent to prevent that. Okay, thank you, Gaby. Okay, thank you, Cinda. Hello, Prahita. Hello, yes, Nabil. Uh, I want ask for you. Uh, okay. What is of allocation act in speech act could you give uh, some examples in everyday life thank you okay thank you Nabila hello may I ask 
Rahita? Ya, Mbak Nurul. Oke. Okay. Uh, I have a question for Rahita. Oh, uh, yeah, you have explained about the proposition sentence. Uh, so my question is, how do you identify that the sentence is included a uh, proposition? Okay, thank you, Mbak Nurul. Hello, presenter. Yes, Mas Alfa. <laughs> Hello, presenter. Hello, Mbak Sinta and Bahita. Yes, Mas may, Alfa. May I ask? Of course, Mas Alfa. Okay. Um, here, uh, I just want to confirm, especially to Mbak Sinta. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Based on your explanation, uh, yeah. I got that uh, comment, question, and request is uh, are classified of allocation egg. Is mm -hmm. it right? Yes. And please give um, what? Please give um, the explanation more and the mm -hmm. reason why comment, question, and request classifying into uh, a location egg why why, why comment request comment, and question and request are are called elocution right yeah, classified yeah classified yes. elocution okay elocution. thank you mas alfat okay you're welcome Basinta. all right i think we have got five questions yes prahita <laughs> Yeah, Mbak Sinta. <laughs> so give us uh, the time to prepare or to arrange the answer for you. Thank you.
okay. I will answer Nabila's question. Not Nabil. Yes, Sita. Okay. Uh, thank you, Nabil, for asking about my material. Uh, in my opinion, the elocution in speech edge aim to make the listener understand the purpose of the speaker. And the example in daily life, I say I'm thirsty in order to make people understand that I need to drink. To drink. Then what I do is called elocution. If I make the same statement in the hope that the person will take a glass of water, then my actions are called perlocutions. So, elocution only make the listener understand the speaker's purpose without doing anything. That if by action, it will be called perlocution. Okay, that I can... Okay, I can catch your answer. Thank you, Marita. You're welcome, Nabil. All right. Uh, may I answer the question? Or Mas Alfat, Mas Alfat. All right. Okay, Mas Hinta. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, your question is why common question and requests are one of the classified of uh, elocution, right? Yes. Right. Uh, as we know that the elocution is an action where the main purpose or intent of the speaker is for to the hearer understand that the speaker's meaning or the speaker's intent so common question and request are elocution because the speaker want to achieve something in the communication and the speaker use uh, used to get the someone else to do something i think that's all because the elocution is the speaker intends to the hearer. Okay, uh, uh, I think enough, Mbak Sinta. It's clear for me. Are you sure, Mbak Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. May I answer for Mbak Nuru question, Mbak Sinta? Yeah, okay, Mbak Nurul, uh, your question is How do you identify that the sentences is included in proposition? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I think sentences considered in propositional logic are not arbitrary sentences but mm -hmm. are the ones that are either true or false but not both. This kind of sentences are called propositions. If a proposition is true, then we say it has a truth value of true. If a proposition is false, its truth value is false. Okay. So it has the relationship uh, with the truth value because uh, I have learned to prove the truth wrong. So, in my opinion, um, to prove the truth value, we can use the truth table. Right? Yes, it's it's right, Mbak Nurul. Okay, thank you for the answer. You're welcome, Mbak Nurul.
Oke. Okay. Uh, the next question I will answer the eh Mbak Dian question. I will answer Mbak Dian question. Yes, please Mbak Sinta. You ask a uh, uh, the example indirective and commissive in indirect and indir indirect and indirect elocution. Yes, Mbak Dian. Yes, Mbak Sinta. Okay, the first I will give in the uh, the example in directive. Uh, this is the question. Why don't we go to Portugal Portugal this summer? Why don't we go to Portugal this summer? In direct elocution, the question means asking why the speaker and hearer do not or will not go to the Portugal. But in indirect elocution, the question means suggesting that the speaker and hearer go to Portugal. This is directive in direct and indirect elocution, Mbak Dian. Oke. Okay. Oke. Okay. Uh, and you. next, in commissive. Oke. Okay. I will go there alone. This is the statement. In indirect, in direct elocution, the statement means the speaker agree or capable to do something. But in direct elocution, the statement means the speaker promise or commit oneself to do some future action. So I think that's all, Mbak Dian. I hope you will more understand about this. Oh, I think it is clear enough, Mbak Sinta. Thank you so much for your answer. Thank you. All right. For the last question, Gaby? Yes, Sinta. Okay. Please. Uh, Gaby, I think in spoken, in spoken communication, uh, rarely occurs. Uh, the miscommunication is rarely occurs because we know uh, between the speaker and hearer uh, understand or know about the situation and condition. But miscommunication always can be occurred. Yes, KB. This is, uh, you said that in direct con in indirect condition, sometimes the speaker has another expression, and to prevent uh, to prevent the miscommunication, there are some way or some strategy. This is based on my opinion, Gaby. Okay, uh, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, you should know the meaning of the speaker intense, and you. Uh, if you don't understand about the meaning, you can ask the speaker which the part you still don't understand. Or maybe you can give the reframe or the conclusion uh, about the speaker word or the speaker's sentence. And the last, I think... <laughs> You should listen the speaker finish the sentence. You should be patient, Gabby. <laughs> okay. So the conclusion is uh, the hearer should be active yes. um, in conversation, right? If we don't understand, we ask for the um, speaker intention. Uh -uh, speaker intention and etc. Okay, I get it. Thank you, Sinta. Okay. Thank you, Gabby. <laughs> Excuse me, Sinta. May yes, I share Ibu. my idea about Gabby's question? Of course, Ibu. Silakan. Yeah. Uh, well, I think uh, Gabby's question is how to overcome the situation if the hearer did not catch the meaning of indirect elocution. Is it right, Gabby? Yeah. If, yes, uh, yes, Ibu. Yes. Yeah, yeah, maybe this is only sharing because I think that when the speaker uses uh, direct utterance, it means that uh, 
they get something because uh, perhaps they have a higher power or a higher position than the here. But sometimes there will be a misunderstanding about that. And uh, I have ever tried to use, uh, uh, what is it, the type of the utterance here, for example, when I ask my sons to stop playing game online. Yeah, for example, uh, at the first, uh, I use uh, a directive utterance for a certain thing, and I will say to him, you will have a bad radiation for playing game online for hours. But until uh, or for some minute, he didn't, well, I mean, uh, he didn't get what the point. So I choose a question and I use uh, my question utterance here and I choose my uh, request utterance to him by asking, could you please stop playing game online, honey? Or I can use uh, a promise. In this case, I just want to ask him to stop playing game online. So the conclusion here, maybe we cannot uh, force the hearer to be active, but as a speaker, we should know other condition about that. So we can change about the utterance with it's the suitable and we can uh, choose uh, whether uh, assertion or question or maybe uh, suggestion is the suitable way to have a successful communication. Uh, that's what I think about your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ibu Muri. You're welcome. Any other comment or your opinion about this material? It is clear for all of you. Okay. Thank you so much for your attention. I we hope you got the meaning about this material and raise our knowledge about this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, presenter. Thank you, presenter. Thank you, presenter. Waalaikumsalam. Bye. Bye.
Waalaikumsalam. Bye. Bye.